All right, so we have had a very eventful day so far. Uh, we spent most of the entire day doing a wedding. Today we thought we would give you guys a little behind the scenes look of shooting a wedding on board the Disney Fantasy, which it was a really cool experience. We had a really great time. And compared to doing more traditional weddings, especially in the theme parks, this was, I think, way more relaxing, not just for us, but also for the couple. Uh, and being that we could really kind of almost do just about anything we wanted as far as taking photos and other stuff like that throughout the ship. Now being husband and wife, Taylor and I make a pretty good team. And for photography, when we are doing just photos, cause we do also photo and video, uh, Taylor takes the lead and I'm her little assistant for most of the day, kind of just capturing some secondary photos. If she would happen to miss something, hopefully I am there to maybe catch it and see. A wedding for us, uh, we have our own way that we work through it. Other photographers might work it a different way. Um, but today what you're gonna see is just kind of our day and how we like to work through things and scheduling around uh, the wedding party for the most part, the wedding couple, uh, and how their events are laid out. So our couple on this cruise did not have uh, any type of reception or kind of party. You know, I think what's really great about doing a wedding on a cruise is that your party can kind of last the entire week. And depending on when you get married during the cruise, um, and for our couple, they got married the second day that we were on the ship, which is our first sea day, it really kind of makes the rest of the cruise uh, a lot more relaxing and I think just fun in general because you're not having to stress about being dressed up and having the makeup look perfect, having the hair look perfect, all of those things. So kicking off the wedding day, we start with our groom and doing some of like the little details, uh, shoes, maybe tie, watch, cologne, uh, and then we have our groom get dressed. Depending on how the timeline works, we actually had to have our groom today get ready earlier so that we could have a little bit more time to play around with the rest of the schedule. So we went down to his room and had him start getting ready. And this is really just pretty relaxing, uh, easy going, getting dressed. And we just kind of snapped those uh, little photos. This kind of, I mean, maybe breaks a little bit of the magic of doing a wedding sometimes, but sometimes you just have to shoot things out of sync and stage a few shots here and there for those really nice, uh, great photos. And Taylor did a fantastic job here, as you can see. One of the things I think that we enjoy about weddings in particular, uh, and especially here on the cruise, is that you really have to work with the bounds of the room that you're in. Um, we've got this huge uh, window or sliding glass door that is just bringing in an immense amount of light no real way for us to cut that. And so you have to really find ways to work with that light and light your subject properly. And I think uh, Taylor did a fantastic job as I just kind of stand around and pretend to take some photos here and there. So now after we finish with our groom, uh, you would think that we would go and take some photos with our bride. However, we actually didn't end up doing that. We went to the our uh, bride's room, but uh, she wasn't ready yet. So what we did was probably the second most stressful part for me of the entire day of any wedding. And that is carrying the uh, dress from the room or for wherever it's at in any other wedding to a location where we're gonna hang it and take some photos of it. I can't stress enough how stressful this makes me because God forbid something happens while you're carrying it. Um, you'll notice that we didn't take the elevator. We go down the stairs because this is a Disney cruise. Coke products are readily available for uh, children from the vending machines upstairs along with unlimited amounts of soft serve ice cream. And I can only imagine to step inside of the elevator and then also have a child come running in. Um, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but you just have to understand uh, where we're coming at, right? So taking the stairs, safest way to go. We actually go down to the main atrium and find a, a really great place to hang the dress. You know, for me, I'm really there, like I said, as an assistant to Taylor, um, I've got an extra light and I'm trying to light the, the dress a little bit differently if I need to. Um, if I don't, then I'll just kind of hang back. I might shoot a few details of the dress, but for the most part, Taylor's gonna be really carrying the full weight of the wedding and the wedding dress on her shoulders. <laughs> Once we were done with that, we took the dress back upstairs. Our bride and uh, some of her family were in getting their hair done and their uh, makeup done in the salon. We went back and it was time to do a first uh, touch with our couple. And uh, this is kind of similar to like a first look, except they're not going to see themselves, obviously. This is part of, I think, for any team that is coming onto a ship, you really have to start looking for these areas that will minimize guest interaction um, and still 
give you the flexibility to kind of do what you want um, as far as photos go. So, you know, for us, we can't stop anybody from coming down a walkway, block off an area to do photos. So we have to be really careful in where we choose. And so we actually chose up by Bippity Boppity Boutique. This is during the day, more than likely, there's not gonna be a lot of people going in there to get uh, their hair done for their kids. Um, and it's just not really heavily traversed as far as walkways go because it's kind of out of the way. Now I will say what is kind of nice is that when other guests do see you taking photos, and see the the couple um, most of the time they will kind of like hang back and just relax uh, and just kind of enjoy because it, it is kind of cool to see a couple uh, all dressed up on the ship and from there uh, we have kind of like this nice little lull a little break Taylor and I go upstairs we get some water she actually got ice cream which I was really really surprised because all I was thinking was let's see the ice cream fall on her shirt because I thought that's what was going to happen Thank goodness it didn't. Once we had a little snack and some water, we made our way to the Meridian Lounge. And uh, outside of the Meridian Lounge is the Meridian Patio, which is where the official ceremony was going to take place. So everybody kind of gathered in there. We waited for our bride to show up. And uh, once everything was set outside, it was time to start uh, the real stuff, which is the actual ceremony part. And it's probably the most stressful part of the day for any photographer, which is the kiss, right? You don't want to miss that because, uh, you know, it's kind of inconvenient to ask everybody to reset to take another kiss photo, right? It was super windy out there, but I think all in all, it ended up going pretty well. Um, lighting was pretty good, a little harsh at a, a few times, but uh, the clouds kind of worked with us for the most part. So once the wedding was over, the official ceremony part, uh, we had a little toast, a couple had their cake. And from there, our day was kind of almost finished for the most part. We did go around and take a few photos with the couple, but the great thing about having your wedding on Disney, for the most part, is that uh, you can take photos throughout the length of your cruise. We don't have to kind of cram everything into that wedding day to make it a little bit more stressful, I think, when compared to this, what we had going on the cruise line. We did a few photos with family out there on the Meridian patio, but for the most part, that was really it. And the couple were able to go back, relax, unwind, and have a relaxing day. Now here is what makes Disney so great, and that is because you can do photos throughout the length of your cruise. The next morning, we got up super early, uh, meaning that the ship was going to be pretty much dead as far as people walking about, and really had the entire ship to ourselves to take photos just about anywhere we wanted with nobody in the background and not needing to worry about that. And so we started in the atrium. It's probably one of the best places you can start in. It's so iconic across all of the Disney ships to have your wedding photos done inside of there. So we did a few shots with our couple around inside, and then we made our way upstairs to the outer deck because we're getting close to that sunrise. Now it is super, super windy out there. So uh, if you've got long hair, be prepared. It might get blown around. And you know, we try to work with that as much as we can. But I think all in all, the photos turned out really, really well. And again, it's just this really cool experience. This was so much fun. We had such a great time and it didn't even stop there actually. So we did the wedding on the first sea day. We did photos of the couple throughout the ship on the second sea day. And then we even went and did a few photos out on Disney's private island at Castaway Key. It was a lot of fun and we had such a great time. And I think the photos turned out really, really well. So mad props to Taylor uh, as she was the lead photographer and I won't take any credit whatsoever other than for all the behind the scenes stuff. So back to the rest of the video. Oh, we're here. See that? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, super cool. That's super cool. Hi, Lori. Oh, there's a fireplace on the door. I know. <laughs> so we spent most of the day doing a wedding today and oh, a little rocky. And uh, so we haven't really done any vlogging or anything like that. And uh, now it's time for dinner. So tonight for dinner, this is our second night on the on the ship. Um, we are at Animator's Palette. Now I'm pretty sure tonight we aren't doing the drawing. Right? Tonight is Crush. So tonight, yeah, Crush is gonna swim around the room, talk to people, and uh, so it should be fun. Uh, menu should be good, but uh, overall it was, a, it was a pretty good day. I think you know a little windy here and there for the wedding, but but it was good. Oh. <laughs> All right, so we are in Animator's Palette. It was stuff in our face over there. Oh yeah, with some focaccia bread. Is it good? Really good, yes. So we have tonight a roasted rosemary and garlic oil dip. That's really good. And uh, it is it is really good. 
It's quite good, yeah. So uh, I've already had some. Taylor's already had some. And uh, I love it. It's like these are the best times. I get Taylor while she's chewing. The best times. The name's Crush. I said, oh, Hello, dude. Excellent. If you're having a terribly awesome time, let me hear you say, Chaw. 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 <laughs> Got the black truffle pasta. Amazing. We missed this dinner back in January because we were eating at Remy. So I'm really excited we got to have it tonight. Dinner tonight was good. I was really excited for this meal since we missed it the last time we were on set. <laughs> I just laugh because I still can't believe how many times we've been on this exact ship, but the black truffle pasta was delicious. And the, what was it? Baked potato and cheddar cheese soup was also really good. It was almost like a puree. There was no like pieces of potato in there, but it was really good. And then uh, I got the ginger teriyaki tenderloin and it was good. It was medium rare, was cooked properly. <laughs> and the wasabi mashed potatoes are really good too. So we are in the atrium and I have never, ever, and all the times that we've been on a cruise, yeah. on the Fantasy, ever seen the atrium look like this. I mean, this is insane. Everybody's out here doing some pictures over there. Wow, it is uh, crazy busy right now. So Taylor and I actually haven't even been in the shops yet. Of course, we've been in the shop multiple times before because we've been on the Fantasy multiple times. But we haven't actually had to come in and see if they've got anything new and cool. Not that I need to buy anything or Taylor needs to buy anything. But, uh, you know, it's just nice to kind of like look around the shops. Uh, sometimes they do some new stuff, like this mug is new. That is, uh, I haven't seen that before. I really like that, actually. Of course, I don't need any more mugs. I've got plenty, but, you know, $26.99. Ooh, I always love the Tommy Bahama stuff, but it is a little bit on the pricier side. Feel this. What are you finding? Oh, wow. They're trying to copy the Tommy Bahama feel. Now, a tip that I would offer everybody when you come onto a cruise ship is if you do want to buy some merchandise or see what they have, one of the best things that you could do is actually get into the shop the very first day that they open up because sometimes they sell out of stuff and what they have on board is what they have on board. So uh, if they run out and you don't get there and get it, then, then uh, yeah. Prime example, so there was a Christmas spear jersey that they used to have, totally gone now. So here's some ornaments that we didn't see the last time that we were on board, and I think these might be like special maybe for, I, I think these ornaments might be special maybe for the cruise. They are 25 bucks and they are pretty cool. Yeah, they actually have way more Christmas ornaments uh, than they have had before in any other cruising cruise sailing that we've been on. So we are in Meridian. This is like the lounge kind of waiting area, so to speak, for Palo and Remy. And uh, we've been in here before, both to wait and have cocktails. And uh, the cruise line has what's called a happy hour, but it's not the happy hour that you might expect. Um, whatever they're serving. So tonight they're doing gin. Another night they might be doing whiskeys. Another night they might be doing rum. Uh, all of those are 20% off, and it's from the cart, and they uh, have everything over there. They make it for you. So. That's what we're doing tonight. So they've got a ton of different gins over there. Oh, wow, look, look at those. That. If you take it, that would close my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't, but... Did they just get those not too long ago, or have they had them? they selling. I asked already in my Super Garza and many people. I don't... I just don't remember them last time when we were here in January. So. I'm just going to give you a small touch. You try, and then you decide her okay. how you would like to. All right. He told me that it was a little bit more on the spicier side as far as like flavor profiles go and whatnot. Um, and it's O P H O P I H R O O O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F O F
Spices of the Orient uh, is the kind of tagline on the bottle. So, uh, and then I he asked what kind of gin or what kind of tonic that I wanted, and I said, you know, dealer's choice. So I let him decide. So we've got a uh, the Mediterranean Fever Tree. They put a little rosemary in there, lemon, lime, and I think those are coffee beans. Uh, it's good. It's really good, actually. Um, I will say I think gin sometimes can be dangerous because if it's a good quality gin, it doesn't really have a strong, like, alcohol, like, you know, intensity to it. So it's pretty smooth and light. Uh, yeah, it's really good. If I can drink something and not, like, make a face, it's good. So I got the La Margarita. I don't remember what's in it. I'm pretty sure I've had it before. But I know there's some Uzo. Uh, sorry. Uzo. I know there's some Uzu and blood orange in there for flavoring. Mm, very citrusy, but delicious. Mm, not, not too sharp, but it's good. So we have had a not so intensive vlog day on a sea day. Yeah. Uh, I thought we would meet a lot of characters, but we didn't really have time to do a lot of character meet and greets. And no, the they were so were long. long tonight. So long. But pro tip, if you're coming on a Disney cruise, you're looking to get a drink or two here and there. The best way to go is just to order it uh, as like whatever your favorite uh, alcohol is. So like for me, I'm, I've been in this gin and tonic kick lately. So I can get a gin and tonic. It's gonna run me about seven to eight dollars, depending on the brand uh, that you get. But it's much cheaper than buying like a mixed cocktail, you know, that's like 11, 12, 13 dollars. Yep. So keep that in mind. And then plus, uh, you know, we were just in Meridian for the happy hour, so you get 20 to 30 percent off uh, some of the alcohol. So uh, this cruise, there's no rum, it's just gin and, and tonic bourbon. and bourbon. So keep that in mind.